my name is Adam Keane. Um, I'm a digital accessibility specialist um, working for the Met Office. Um, we're all, all about the weather, uh, but we, we do a, a lot more than uh, just weather forecasts. Um, we, we've got a, a really interest in, in, in technology. Um, we are, we're also interested in um, engineering, maintaining uh, weather observations um tech, uh, equipment across the across the country and um i i came into this uh apprenticeship from a from a background in care um i worked for two years as a um a support worker working with adults with learning difficulties um prior to that i worked in schools um i have a first class degree in religious studies and that's that's really helped me um develop sort of like a person-centered approach to digital accessibility and the role that I do at the Met Office. Um, I believe I'm the first person across the civil service to be enrolled in the apprenticeship um, and it's it's a really it's a really good opportunity to to learn a new set of skills and to um, help make digital content accessible for everyone. It's, it's quite a, a varied role, um, really. I, I, I've spent the last three days working with a, a team from a company called All Able, um, delivering a, an empathy lab um, kind of experience to to our colleagues across the Met Office. We, we've we've spoken to about 240 different colleagues over the week, and providing them with different opportunities to use different assistive technology, um, and to really. One of the key parts of the apprenticeship is a knowledge part is is is, a, is, a, is developing an awareness of disabilities and how that impacts on people. So that's been a, a big focus of my, my work over the last couple of months. But it's it's I, I'm also involved in work different working groups that is is concerned about providing the right kind of guidance to, to colleagues. The the poster behind me is 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 a sort of like a collaborative effort with um, my colleagues in, in branding, um, my colleagues in uh, equality, diversity, inclusion part. And we, we've developed sort of like a, a 10 steps to digital, digital accessibility poster that talk about um, these are the things if we, if we, if everybody in our organisation um, did these things, we'd be, we'd be taking, taking steps to ensure that all of our information, all of our knowledge was accessible to everybody. Um, one in five people in the UK uh, have declared a dis disability. Um, and you you rarely, in the process of making something accessible, you, you rarely make it less productive for you, um, for, for colleagues. So you, you're really helping everybody by uh, making things accessible. I think one of the, one of the things I, I, I really enjoy about being an apprentice and the, the, the couple, personally I'm I'm the fourth generation in my family to be to, to go through an apprenticeship um, sort of style program my great-grandfather was a sort of like was a coal miner um, my, my father was a, an engineer and uh, an, an apprenticeship gives you you skills for life and you can the, the skills that you, you learn as part of a digital accessibility uh, apprenticeship are, are skills that are going to be as we our dependence on information on the internet it grows and um, we, we the the skills that are going to be in demand whether that's ensuring that content on digital on social media is accessible um, but it's and I, I'm a I'm a real passionate learner uh, so having an opportunity to to devote to have have time in the day or a day a week where I can just focus on digital accessibility, thinking through what what uh, what what we what WCAG requirement is 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 pertinent to this and and being able to go back and share that knowledge and understanding with colleagues is is a is a real uh, pleasure and a, a real joy. Um, it's it's a it's about for us, it's a 
digital access is the the opportunity to to raise awareness about digital accessibility and it provides you the the opportunity to help and um leverage digital inclusion across across the across a, an organization um and and support colleagues um in that journey with you by um it's helping them make little changes in in the work that they do um so in so for example ensuring that documents have got proper heading structure it, it's something that helps everybody um being able to navigate a, a, a document whether whether you're a screen reader user or or just a, a busy um, executive trying to find a relevant part of a document it, it, it helps everybody um and i think in terms of my own personal development i think the the apprenticeship is is, is providing you with that dedicated time to to focus on that and to really go for it and really to 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 aspire to to do things the, the empathy labs are a really great example of that it's where somebody comes into the met office with a with an idea shares it with a with colleagues and five months later you're you're reaching um an audience with a with a message of um digital accessibility for everybody um so and that's that's really quite rewarding and satisfying to to be able to help and deliver that because it's it's one of those apprenticeship that that really can make a difference and then it can make an impact on on people's individuals life um lived experiences of of the internet for example uh, uh, robin christopherson uh ceo of ability net describes the the internet as a as a living trauma um so by uh, so he's, he's he's blind um so by providing um ensuring that digital content is, is accessible you support um the one in five people in the uk who have, have got some sort of disability i think it's fun, fantastic that purple beard are a, a trail braided blazing this this apprenticeship it's 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 so needed and it, it's great that purple beard have grabbed the the, the ball by the horn so to speak and a, a delivering an apprenticeship that has real value for the for, for, for technology and for, for for lots of different organizations across the uk um and it it's been great to engage in the the sessions that we've had um and it's it's been a, a really really positive experience I, I i've really appreciated the 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 approach that the, the team have taken that it that, that they're on on a, on a on a learning journey too and that they're they're keen to to take feedback and keen keen to develop and 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 as we 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 trail we trailblaze the apprenticeship standards together we're we've developed a we, we've got a system of, of communication and feedback and and well as a as an apprentice i'm i'm keen to in, in, input into that process of sort of like continuous improvement in, in ensuring that um future apprentices get the an, an apprenticeship that that meets the the, the standard and um it sets them up for a career in digital accessibility and um, ensuring that content and information and knowledge is, is available for uh, different workforces. I think for a, for an employer, I'd, I'd say definitely consider the the information that you put out the, the your knowledge whether that's for, for met office we're, we're obviously talking about climate science um and stuff and, and stuff like that but different organizations have different different sort of like knowledge assets and the, they're they're extremely valuable and can you afford not to be reaching potentially one in five people um in in 
in in the UK if you're you can if you don't know that your digital content is is accessible. I think my advice for apprentices it coming in would be that it's it's a fantastic opportunity to make substantial impact in in an organisation. But if you if you've got a set of skills that um, and enable you to relate to people and understand the needs of people, then an apprenticeship um, doing digital accessibility is is a is a great opportunity to de develop those skills in in something like um, in 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 the technology sector. Um, I, I really see the role as sort of like the bridging the gap between technology and people and as a digital accessibility specialist you can you can be the you can bridge that gap between these two different um areas so yeah no definitely my i, I see my future at the at the met office it is a, a fantastic great place to work with with some incredibly talented people and um as a, as an apprentice I, I i i would like to grow and develop into uh, an accessibility expert and to to be able to um be have have peership with with some of the expertise um that we've, we've got in the in the met office um the the support that i've had from my line manager sarah uh le breton and it has been outstanding and i of belonging at the Met Office and, and that's incredibly important. So yeah, I'll be, I hope to remain at the Met Office for the foreseeable future. And the, the great thing about the Met Office is that we do retain staff. We first first day at the Met Office, I was chatting to a gentleman who worked in IT and asked him how long he'd been there and he, he said he'd been there for, for 40 years. So it's, you, you don't work for a company for for that length of time if it's if it's not a, a great place to work um so it, it, it's certainly generating a lot of interest in the, the met office we we've got a sort of like a an information architecture guild that have been been talking about chat gpt and and thinking about different use cases within the met office um within uh, we we've got obviously concerns about data protection and what what information we, we feed in and how we we verify the information that we're getting out of something like chat gpt for, for obviously data protection and uh intellectual property kind of considerations but i think there's one of the, the one of the, the interesting use cases might be using something like chat gpt to generate alt text for for images that's that's something that i've i thought well that that could work that that might be a way to to leverage that kind of technology um but it's i don't i think you you're always going to need digital accessibility apprentices or, or you're going to always going to need individuals who've got an, some expertise within the field because you you're ex essentially coaching a system and you 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 do de you're developing um you, you fine tuning what the, the AI can can do through the questions that you're asking. So, uh, but yeah, it's, it's it's fantastic. And in terms of the empathy lab, it was it, it, I was saying to Saeed at the, at the start of the call, it's it it's been three really hard days. I've I've been arriving at the Met office at six thirty, not finished until five o'clock, um, just to get admin sorted. But we've we've probably had two hundred and forty different interactions with people about why did, uh, why assistive technology is important. We've been sharing our 10 steps to digital accessibility with people on, on our stand and we're, we're trying to raise a, a level of awareness and a, a level of skill around these different areas. You, you may have seen the observation that I did with Sneha, um, but we I essentially did we began a sort of like a, a review of some of our MetNet articles, and this poster is, is has been backed up by by that um, ongoing um, research and that on, ongoing auditing 
so we the audit took in 109 different articles and this is the these are the common thing themes that come out of it we we need to ensure that we're we we've got alternative texts we, we're using accessibility checkers um we're we're ensuring that there's sufficient color contrast and but we've that's been a, a joint project with um our branding team and our edni lead so it's it i can't take all the credit but there's there was a, a lot of research done about and a lot of auditing done around um the 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 articles that that helped develop that list so it's there's probably 45 hours work um in that poster <laughs>